Hello students, this is Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming for another session in surplus chemistry. In this session, we shall see about the properties of colloids like Brownian moment, Tyndall effect, electrophoresis and coagulation. Okay students, let us move on into the topic now. Okay, the first uh, property is the mechanical property. So, under mechanical property, we have the important topic that is the Brownian moment. Okay, what do you mean by Brownian moment? Say actually it is the continuous rapid zigzag motion of colloidal particles in a dispersion medium is called Brownian moment. Okay, so it's a continuous, so continuously the colloidal particles will be moving inside the dispersion medium and that also very fast. Okay, uh, it, it, it moves very fast and also that too in a zigzag uh, manner. Okay, there won't be any uniformity, the, the molecules will be moving in a zigzag motion. So, that continuous rapid and zigzag motion of the colloidal particles in a dispersion medium is called as a Brownian moment. Normally, the colloidal sulfur will be undergoing this Brownian moment, right? Okay, three, this is due to this type of zigzag movement or the Brownian movement is mainly due to the bombardment of the colloidal particles by molecules of dispersion medium, okay? For example, if any of the colloidal particle is dispersed in water, the, the colloidal particles will be bombarding with the molecules of uh, water molecules. Okay, so because of that continuous bombardment, there will be continuous rapid zigzag motion of the colloidal particles. Understood? And this type of Brownian movement is independent of the nature of the colloids. Okay, actually, this Brownian movement is independent of the nature of the colloids, but it depends upon the size of the particle and also the viscosity of the uh, solution. Okay, viscosity of the solution understood. So, actually this type of Brownian movement is mainly depending upon the size of the colloidal particle and also the viscosity of the So, this Brownian movement has stirring effect which does not permit the colloidal particles to settle down. See, it will never allow the colloidal particles to settle down. So, it will be continuously, the particles will be continuously moving, right? So, this Brownian movement has a stirring effect, understood? This uh, Brownian movement has a stirring effect. Okay, greater the size of the colloidal particle, lesser will be the Brownian movement. Understood? See, if the colloidal particle is having a greater size or a larger size, then lesser will be the Brownian movement. If the size is smaller, then the Brownian movement will be high. Okay, so it is vice versa, right? inversely proportional to the size of the colloidal particle. Understood? So the next important property is the optical property. See, under optical property, we have the Tyndall effect. Okay. What do you mean by Tyndall effect? See, it's a very important question. See, what do you mean by Tyndall effect? When a beam of light is passed through the colloidal solution, the path of the beam is visible. This is called Tyndall effect. Understood? When a beam of light is passed through a colloidal solution. See here, this is a true solution and this is a colloidal solution. When a beam of light is allowed to pass through the colloidal solution, the path of the beam, see the path of the beam is visible. See, this is also another example. This is true solution and this is colloidal solution. See here, this is the uh, light source, okay. See, we can, it's not possible to see the light uh, light source through the true solution, but it is possible to see the uh, light source through the colloidal solution, okay. So, this property is called as a Tyndall effect. And see here, this is a forest area. Here also, we can see the light rays coming, right. So, this is also Tyndall effect. This is observed in forest, okay. So, when a beam of light is passed through the colloidal solution, the path of the beam is visible. The path of the beam is visible. This is called as Tyndall effect. Actually, why this occurs and this is mainly due to the scattering of light by the colloidal particles. See here in the colloidal solution, the colloids will be, the particles will be moving in a zigzag manner. It's not Brownian movement. So, because of this zigzag movement, the light which is passing through this solution will be scattered by this colloidal particle. So, so this scattering of light is responsible for the Tyndall effect. So, the illuminated path is called as the Tyndall effect, okay. Now, if the diameter of the dispersed particle is not much smaller than the wavelength of the light used. See here, inside this colloidal solution will be having the dispersed particle, mean the colloidal particles. So, the diameter of this colloidal particle should not be much smaller than that of the wavelength of the light what we are seeing, understood. So, that is the main condition for this Tyndall effect. Actually, uh, this effect, Tyndall effect is used to distinguish between the colloidal solution and the true solution, okay, colloidal solution and the true solution. Actually, uh, the ex some other examples are also there for this uh, Tyndall effects, right, not alone uh, in, in between true solution and colloidal solution, twinkling of stars, okay, twinkling of stars, then blue color of the sky, then uh, scattering of light by the dust particle. 
see here this is an example for scattering of light by dust particle so the uh, we can we could see the tindall effect in the forest area here we have the dust particles in the atmosphere so the light uh, rays are scattered by the dust particles so here we can see the tindall effect understood so twinkling of stars blue sky blue color of the sky scattering of light by the dust particles are mainly due to this tindall effect okay see here there are two types of uh, colloids like is it not lyophilic and lyophobic colloids of this two this lyophilic colloids do not show tindall effect okay it do not show tindall effect lyophilic the reason because is the particles which are present inside the lyophilic will be very small on excessive solvation okay when when more water or more uh, dispersed medium is added this will be getting completely uh, solvated the uh, particles which are present inside the um, dispersed medium will be completely solvated so due to excess solvation the lyophilic colloids do not show the tindall effect understood students so these are all the important points coming under tindall effect so the next important property is electrical property so under electrical property we have two types that is electrophoresis and the next one is electroosmosis okay what will be electrophoresis it is a movement of the colloidal particles under the influence of electric field is called electrophoresis okay see the movement of colloidal particles see in a colloidal solution we have two two uh, med two phases one is the dispersed phase and another one is dispersed medium is it not so the colloidal particles are called as the dispersed phase and the next solution in which or the solvent in which the colloidal particles are dispersed are called as the dispersion medium understood so here in the case of electrophoresis there will be the movement of the colloidal particles or the dispersed phase okay see here we are having the colloidal solution this is the cathode and this is the anode when it is connected to an uh, a battery see when you, under the uh, field under the electric field the particles or the colloidal particles will start to move towards the uh, respective electrode see here the cations are moving towards the cathode and the anions are moving towards the anode understood so this colloidal movement of this colloidal particles under the influence of electric field is called as electrophoresis okay and what is electroosmosis it is the movement of dispersion medium okay it is the movement of dispersion medium under the influence of electric field is called as electroosmosis okay see here this is the colloidal solution and these are the two electrodes okay two electrodes see here the dispersion medium that is the solvent is moving it is moving leaving behind the colloidal particles the colloidal particles are remaining as such whereas the dispersed medium is moving okay it is drained down okay and it is moving uh, towards the electrode under the influence of electric field okay this is called as electro osmosis understood students so the next important property is coagulation what is it coagulation it is a process of converting a colloid into a precipitate by the addition of suitable electrolyte is called as coagulation so what in by coagulation the process of converting a colloid into a precipitate by the addition of a suitable electrolyte okay see here this is a colloidal solution okay and we are adding the co co coagulant uh, is added that is electrolyte is added what happens here the coagulant forms precipitate by trapping the impurities okay so it will be forming a precipitate and the precipitate trap precipitate and the trapped impurities will be settling at the bottom okay so the coagulant uh, along with the precipitate will be settling at the bottom right so this process is called as coagulation okay so here what what actually what happens is the lyophilic so uh, lyophobic sol you know the stability of the lyophobic what is the lyophobic solvent repelling salt is it, is it not so a lyophobic sol is due to the charge on the colloidal particles okay what why what is the reason while the lyophobic salts are very stable that is due to the presence of the charge on the colloidal particles see if the charge is removed uh, uh, from the particles then the particles will come together to, uh, to and aggregate and forms a, uh, a coagulation and it coagulates understood when when the charge on the lyophobic colloidal particles are removed those particles will come together and they aggregate or they coagulate and forms a precipitate understood so this is the procedure going on right so in that case we should know about flocculation value what is the flocculation value see this is a important point flocculation value what is the flocculation it is the minimum concentration okay so it is the this is the minimum concentration of the 
electrolyte in millimoles okay in millimoles that must be added to 1 liter of colloidal solution so as to coagulate it completely understood so what is what in by flocculation value it is the minimum concentration of the electrolyte in millimoles which should be added to 1 liter of the colloidal solution in order to make it a precipitate or to coagulate it completely understood so that is a flocculation value so this is very important okay and next how to coagulate this lyophobic salts and the lyophilic salts that's we are going to see coagulation of lyophobic salt it can be done by electrophoresis what do you mean by electrophoresis it is the movement of dispersed to phase in the under electric field is it not so by electrophoresis or by boiling or persistent dialysis or by adding electrolytes okay or by adding electrolytes or by adding two oppositely charged salts when you are adding two oppositely charged salts what happens is neutralization takes place okay this causes neutralization of charges on the colloidal particles leading to the coagulation okay so leading to coagulation what happens when you are adding two oppositely charged salts Neutralization will be taking place um, uh, so that there won't be any charged colloidal particles. So, automatically that will be leading to coagulation. So, this type of coagulation is called as mutual coagulation. Which type is called as mutual coagulation? The adding up of two oppositely charged, charged salts. Yeah. So, that one is called as mutual coagulation. So, that one is called as mutual coagulation. Understood, students? Mutual coagulation. Okay. So, the next method is coagulation of lyophilic salt. How can it be done? It can be done by adding the electrolytes, by adding electrolytes, by adding some suitable solvents such as alcohols or acetone. So, when you are adding alcohols or acetone, what happens is dehydration of dispersed phase occurs. See, when you are adding this alcohol or acetone to the lyophilic salts, what happens? Dehydration occurs. Okay. Dehydration occurs dehydration of the dispersed dispersed phase occurs okay dispersed that is colloidal particles occurs and under this condition when small quantity of electrolyte can even bring about coagulation okay see when you are adding alcohol and acetone dehydration of the dispersed phase phase takes place under this condition when you are adding an electrolyte that can bring about a coagulation understood students well fine students you might have understood what i have taught today let me meet you with another important topic in my next session until then, it's Dr. Anitra, your chemistry mentor, signing off from you. Thanks for watching.